Hi, good morning. My name is Lisa. This is my dad, Roy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to King Worldwide. As the screen goes in and out. Well, it was a little too close first. Okay, well. Okay, glory to God. We are, we are flexible every time we get together. Mm -hmm, we are. I like it better this way. Hi, everybody. Glory to God. It's a great day. Praise God. So today, God's favorite verse. Well, this is from the Holy Spirit through my dad because God's favorite verse for me is Galatians 2.20, but go ahead. Well, this was God's favorite verse that he mentioned to a great man of God who told me about it. Great. And so it was a conversation that, uh, that he had with Jesus, as a matter of fact. As a matter of fact. And Jesus asked him what his verse was, and he told him. And then this man asked Jesus, said, all right, Jesus, what's your favorite verse? And, uh, and we're going to talk about it today. Glory to God. This is for everybody, for life liberty and the pursuit of happiness. No, no, I'm just kidding. I, I didn't know I didn't know it was his favorite verse until a couple of years ago, but the uh, um, but it's one that I learned years and years ago and it's one of my favorite, not because it's Jesus' favorite. It's one of my favorite because of what it represents. So God's will for mankind be, can be found in generation in Genesis 1 and 2 and Revelation 21:22. First two books of the Bible and the last two books of the Bible, chapters of the Bible. In between pages one and the last page, there are over 30,000 verses, 23,000 in the Old Covenant mm. and 7,000 in the New Covenant. That's good info. Good. That's what we're here for. Mm -hmm. Even though I don't understand all the verses in the past, I am a true believer of what has been written in the Bible. Now, here's why. Here's why that I believe it unconditionally, this verse. Okay, so this verse is 2 Corinthians 3, 16, and we're going to come take it from New King James, New American Standard, and Amplified, per your request. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. Whenever a person turns in repentance and faith to the Lord, the veil is taken away. What a great scripture. That's good. Now, is that all three of them? Yes, it is, sir. Okay. Is that... Uh, hmm. is that did, I, did I do the wrong one? Well, that's not the one I thought it was. But I think that's a, such a great script, a scripture. I, I, I know. I know it's a great... What is the one that's... Uh, oh, that's such a good... Two all Christians? scripture is given by... You have that down here. You have that... Uh, you well, have that down here. Well, let's see. You have it. that right here. Excuse us. This is a fun, fun story. Here, right here. That no prophecy of Scripture is any private. Oh, so Timothy is all Scripture. That's that's what it is. It must be 2 Timothy 3.16. But I really like 2 Corinthians 3.16. Oh, I thought it was good. I, the I, veil I, that's a new good. one for me. But all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. So that's the reason why, uh, that's the reason why that, uh, that from the very beginning, well, I won't say from the very beginning, but as I went on my spiritual journey, then I started to develop unconditional belief and faith in God's Word because if it's if it's coming from the Holy Spirit, pretty good source. Yeah, and this scripture does tie in. If, it does when we veil. repent and turn to God, then the veil is lifted and we can understand scripture yeah, by the Holy you're Spirit. You're covering up good for my no, mistake. No, no. <laughs> It, I'm not. It's. I like this scripture. It's fine. I like it. It's not the end of the world. I like it, though. In, in the third epistle of John, listen to the word truth. In the third epistle of John, listen to the word truth in these three verses. Okay, so 3 John 1, 1, 3 John 3, and 3 John 4. This one's from the New Living Translation. This letter is from John the Elder. I am writing to Gaius, my dear friend, whom I love in the truth. Okay, just remember, in the truth. Some of the traveling teachers recently returned and made me very happy by telling me about your faithfulness and that you are living according to the truth. According to the truth. And again... We're going to explain in a minute what that is. I could have no greater joy than to hear that my children are following the truth. There is only one truth. That's it. All right. What truth is John referring to? Now, let's go to 3 John 2. The truth is, from the New mm. American Standard Bible, Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. What is the soul? 
the mind, will, emotions, imaginations, memories, personality, everything that goes on in our thinker. Okay, the reason why that this is God's favorite verse is because he wants the very best for his children, mm -hmm. all of us. Don't we want the best for our children? Yes, you do. Yes, we do. Now, let's reread this verse and kind of break down its meaning. Um, all right, beloved. That means some, well, you, you read that. Beloved. And, and I, I'm going to, I've got some beloved. notes here. I back. pray that in all respects, so that could be, that's all. All, A-L-L. Uh, the, -L -L. the word all is a big word because it includes everything. All. It's not just what you think. It's all. Am I waiting for you? All right. Beloved means divinely loved ones. Mm. Beloved. I like that. Divinely loved ones. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> Beloved, I wish above all things, all things. All. Oh. That is including everything. How much is it? Everything. There's no exception, nothing outside of it. And and so he's saying, Beloved, I, John's saying to Gaius, and God From is the saying Spirit, to yeah. us, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. Prosper means yeah. to excel in everything that's desirable. It's not just money, although that's a part of it, but to excel in everything or all. That I'm talking about health, deliverance, family relationships, freedom, whatever, mental whatever health, emotional is, health, whatever there is in life, mm -hmm. is that beloved. I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. And Lisa just explained that. Now, one can let's look at pro prosper and be in health. One can prosper financially. They can have a ton of money, but if their health is not good, they ain't going to do much good. Right. One can be very healthy and not be financially sound, and that's not going to be very good, Sim simply because that you need to have both of them to live the life that God explains when he says, Beloved, I wish above all things, above all, I was prosper in health, you have both of them that you that we prosper and have, even as our soul prospers. So, those are the two major areas: mm -hmm. prosperity and health. And for financial prosperity. Well, and health. I mean, well, financial prosperity is in there, but yeah. prosperity in everything. Yes, to correct. To excel, let's see. Just like Jesus, it was just like Jesus. Empower to to to, to excel here. Is something to excel in anything? Or to prosper is to excel. Yeah, to excel in in something or anything that is desirable. So it's all areas. So it's everything. God want, God wants us to prosper in everything and be in health because those two combined will render the blessing in our life that we receive when we accept Jesus, our Lord and Savior. As a father and mother, excuse me, how does it make you feel when a daughter is prospering in all areas? Same way. That's right. So we don't want our children having prospering in one way and not another. It's all, and it's the same how God feels. That's how he created us. That's exactly right. All right very good. There Glory to God. God. Okay. Yes, poverty hurts mentally. Yes, poverty is a curse. Lack now, is a curse. Now, as we said, John was writing this to his friend Gaius, but God is saying this to us. Yes. What God said to them yesterday, mm -hmm. he's saying it to us today. God's word is God speaking to us. Mm -hmm. All right, here are two verses to tie it together. Acts 10.34, King James then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. No respecter of persons. So what's available to you is available to me. Second Peter 1.20 from King James, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. In 1993, I learned that last scripture as far as 2 Peter 1.20. As a matter of fact, I say it virtually every day so Glory that I understand that every prophecy in the scripture is of no private interpretation. Not in just words, for 
it's you not, or it's just not for just me, me my, or anybody else. It's for, all. it's for everybody who believes. In conclusion, mm-hmm. now that we clearly understand God's favorite verse, mm-hmm. 3 John 2, it's easier to appreciate the, fun, the foundational verse of King Worldwide Ministry, which is Matthew 6.33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. His way of thinking and doing and being. And here's the word. And all things will be added unto you. All things and only good things come from God. In James it says that. So therefore, all things come to us. As a result of seeking him. First. So we don't have to think about anything but seeking him. Get in the word. Glory to God. Have a great day. Thank you, Dad. That was awesome. Okay, see y'all soon.